I'm Jamie Dempsey. And I'm heading to the heart of Luzon, the largest island in the Philippines. There, I hope to find the Kalinga tribe, once feared as headhunters. Central to their identity were their distinctive tattoos, separating the men from the boys, the elite from the average, protecting against sickness, injury, and death. Only one tribal tattooist remains, and she's 96. I'm on a quest to find her and ask her to give me a tattoo before this art form dies forever. On this leg of my journey, I'm swinging by the country's economic center, Metro Manila, where I trick out a new ride. I really can't wait to take this on the road. Move up north to play Pit Cupid. Well, it looks like a match made in heaven to me. And get stuck in a rut. Thank you, get out! I'm about halfway through my journey, and from here on out, the roads are bound to get rougher. After all, my ultimate destination is in the heart of the highlands. So it's about time to trade my bike for something that can go off-road. That's why I'm cruising down the South Luzon Expressway, the gateway to the nation's seat of power. Home to almost 12 million people at only 600 square kilometers, Metro Manila is really made up of 16 cities put together. This bustling capital region, home to soaring skyscrapers, winding asphalt streets, and deadlock traffic, may not be a good place to enjoy the open road, but it sure is the best spot to score a new ride. I made it to Rapali to see if maybe I can swap out my bike for something that's a little more all-terrain. Let's see what they've got. Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Aldous. This is an awesome showroom. As soon as I walked in, I thought, okay, you guys are gonna have something that I'm looking for. Definitely, we have a lot of bikes around here. Well, what I'm looking for exactly is something that might be uh, a little all-terrain, something that can handle smooth roads, rough roads. I'm heading north, I got a long journey ahead. Something I can be comfortable on. Well, we can walk around here and show you some different bikes that yeah, we have. Yeah, let's see what you got. We do have uh, on-road bikes. As you can see, we have the Duke, we have the Royal Enfield and other bikes. But if you're going for extreme uh, off-roading, I would suggest a Rock-On. It's also uh, a motorcycle made in the U.S. I've never seen a bike like this before. It's really interesting. You mind if I sit on it? I don't mind. So it's a two-wheel drive. Oh. The problem is this one is only off-road. It's pretty comfortable, but you're right. I do need something that can go on-road and a little bit off-road. So I think maybe this isn't the bike for me. All right, well, we'll show you one of uh, the best uh, uh, on and off-road adventure bike that we call it here in the Philippines. Yes, adventure bike. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we have here uh, what we call the Ural motorcycle. It is made in Russia since the 1930s. Ural started life as a Soviet maker of motorcycles for the war against Nazi Germany. The bikes could handle harsh Russian roads and winters and even came with sidecars for machine gunners. To keep safe from Nazi bombers, production moved to the Ural Mountains, giving the company its name. I'm liking the look of the Ural. The question is, which Ural? On one side is the Ural Gear Up, a powerful two-wheel drive designed for tough terrains. On the other side is the Ural Retro, which maybe isn't quite as hardy, but which can handle both on and off-road conditions. The gear up is higher, heavier, and has bigger wheels, which allows it to power through rough conditions. But I actually find that a little intimidating because a heavier bike can be harder to handle. Plus, the retro has a bigger fuel tank. And in the jungles where I'm heading, who knows how long I'll have to ride before finding a gas station. This one looks like it might be a little too much for me to handle, but this one right away, I yes. could feel yes. we're going to get along. Yes. 
I really can't wait to take this on the road. This is really cool. I'm gonna get on it. All right. It's gonna be a little strange for me to switch from the automatic to the manual shifter, um, but I've got plenty of time to get used to it. <laughs> Feels good. And there's tons of storage space so I can collect lots of souvenirs. This is great. Well, I'm really excited to get this baby on the road. It's gonna be a lot more horsepower than I've been riding. It's gonna be a lot more weight, shifting, a lot more things to get used to but I'm up to the task. I can do it. I love it. Just an hour and 30 minute ride from the nation's capital leads you to its culinary center, Pampanga. They say that this flatland is home to the country's best cooks. In fact, some of the country's most popular fast food chains started in tiny kitchens in this very province. And some of the country's most exotic dishes started in this province as well. Crunchy, tangy, and rich in protein, the Kamaru makes for a healthy, crispy treat. That is, if you don't mind eating rice field crickets. And they say you haven't really visited the Philippines if you haven't tasted this baby. A baby duck, that is. <laughs> the balut, or duck embryo, is usually served hard-boiled. But in Pampanga, it's sautéed to perfection. But among its clever culinary creations, sisig is the most famous. And even though I've tried the seafood version back in Batangas, they say you can't make this Pampanga original sizzling dish without pork. Pork face, in fact. <laughs> and speaking of pork, this is something I've never seen. There's actually a pig being towed by a tricycle. I gotta find out where they're going. I'm Mario. <laughs> Hi, Mario. I'm sorry, but I've been stalking you a little bit. I'm really intrigued by the fact that you're carting around a pig on your tricycle. Where are you taking it? Punta lang ako sa likod. Magsiservice ako ng inain. So you pick up the male pig, take him to the female pig, they get a little action, and then you bring him home. Yeah. So you're kind of like a pig pimp. <laughs> How much do you charge for that service? 800. 800? It's a good living. Okay, well, I'm sure you have a busy day. I don't yes. want to hold you up, but do you mind if I continue to follow you a little bit? I promise to stay out of your way. I promise to stay far out of his way. This is where the magic happens. So we've brought the male in, the female's here waiting. Ooh. And now they're just kind of checking each other out, getting to know each other. I guess Mario helps them along a little bit. He pushes on the female, lets her know that this is time. <laughs> Hi Mario, sorry I had to leave you. 
is getting a little noisy. <laughs> so was it good? A good match? Hindi mas pabalik na lang ako pinabukasan. Kung hindi pa rin pwede, i-recommend ako yung artificial insemination. You would do yeah. artificial insemination so, to make sure that we get her pregnant. Is there a special person that does that here? Pwede kitang i-recommend ako yung Nile. Nile. Okay, I'm gonna go find Nile and see how he does his job. Thank you so much for including me in your business as well. This is very educational. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Filipinos love pork. Its meat is found in most of their meals. So breeding them is serious business. But demand for pork in the Philippines has been getting even higher. And pig farmers just can't rely on natural methods any longer. So they turn to the wonders of science to keep up with demand. Artificial insemination is said to increase conception rate, leading to a much higher success of commercial breeding. Hi, you must be Niall. Hi, I'm you must be Jamie. Jamie. Yes, yes. I was told to find you because you're the man who does the artificial insemination. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure that they were ladies when I first walked in because I see behind them the testicle. Yeah. So these aren't ladies. These are boar. <laughs> How do we know when they're ready to be mounting the females? Every four days, a senior boar are collected to collect the semen. So are they all on the same schedule or you have them staggered out? About five to eight heads per day. Okay, so they only have a few days to wait until they get lucky. Yes. <laughs> oh, hi guys. So this is the one uh, that... Uh, this one? This one is ready for mounting. He's humongous. That's like the size of a truck. This is a <laughs> matured boar and ready to fight. When you enter the ring, it's about UFC. Oh, you should say that. It can bite you. Oh, gosh. This has to be a tricky thing to do because he's huge, he's strong, and you're going to get in there with him? Yes, this is, uh, this is the critical one. Technically, mounting is dangerous. Okay, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Okay, be careful. This is the boar. We call it large white. Origin is uh, from the USA. From the US, just like me. It is about 300 to 350 kilogram. The boar mount a dummy sow. It's a steel horizontal that uh, look like a uh, swine. Well, of course, uh, when he mount, you have to stand back. Stand back. I don't want to get okay. in the way of this lucky pig. It's ready. He's familiarizing the dummy sow checks out the dummy, which is really just a metal tube shape. Oh, he's flirting with it. Yes. Up, 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 up. Oh. She mount. When he mount, you have to be ready for the semi-collection. Anytime he could extend this uh, reproductive part. This is ready, and we have to check it. <laughs> this is a little embarrassing to watch. So the penis is uh, oh. getting expanding. It will ejaculate for eight to ten minutes. Eight to ten minutes? Well, it's a good thing these guys are trained to do this at a very young age. He pretty much knows exactly what he's doing when he comes out of the pen. And after he checks it out, knows it's safe, he gets to work. <laughs> Sometimes my curiosity gets me into some pretty interesting situations. You never know what you're going to find on the road. And I've definitely learned something new today an experience I'm sure I won't forget. A 226 kilometer drive up north brings me to Nueva Vizcaya, the granary of the Philippines. don't mind the long drive, especially with the view. The Philippines is the eighth largest rice producer in the world, growing 2.8% of the world's rice supply. 
but the harvest doesn't come easy. Every grain has to be earned with backbreaking hard work. I've noticed a lot of farmers, which makes sense because this area is known as the rice bowl. It looks like really hot and difficult work, so I bet you they wouldn't mind an extra pair of hands. <music> Filipino farmers use modern machines, but those can break down. So often, farmers turn to the carabao, or water buffalo, to lighten the farming load. In fact, carabaos are so valuable that they're the national animal of the Philippines. So I noticed back here this guy's plowing the field, and I'm wondering how often he has to do this kind of work. Two times. Every. Two times? And then he does this every week, every day? Every week, every week. So two times a week. And what season is it? Is it all year round? Just in May? Yeah, yeah. So I'm in luck. <laughs> it looks difficult. Is it hard? No. It's yes, not hard? Yeah. So maybe someone like me with no green thumbs can do it? Yes, I can. All right, I don't know if I believe you, but maybe I can try it. Before you can plant rice, the soil first needs to be plowed. Plowing, or what is known in the Philippines as araro, involves dragging a big rake through the soil cutting grooves to plant the rice seedlings in. How do I get down here? Uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm gonna have a mud bath. Thank you. Oh, it's squishy! <laughs> oh, it's really sticky. It's pretty deep. Uh, this is gonna be difficult. The muscle power to plow the sticky soil comes from the massive beast. Oh my god. You're gonna let me do this by myself? How do I move this guy? Hey, let's go. Okay, this carabao seems pretty obedient. If I make clicking sounds, it starts moving. Oh, no, don't stop. Keep going. Don't stop. Then again, maybe it can't really understand my accent. Hey, yeah. hey, yes, yes, yes. yeah. Forwards, not backwards. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Wrong. Get out of the tail. Oh. 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 So he knows. As soon as you say ho, oh, he stops. So when you're plowing one man, one caribou, how much of the field do you cover? More than one hectare. More than one hectare. That sounds like a long, hard day. I don't have the time for that. <laughs> Okay, I'll try a little bit more. Okay. What makes rice farming more challenging is that the ground has to be flooded to keep weeds and pests at bay. Oh, this might be a job I'm not quite prepared for. <laughs> I'm definitely getting stuck in the mud. Woo! Oh. Oh. <laughs> not too fast, buddy. Oh. Oh. Slogging under the sun and through the deep and sticky mud, rice farmers work up some serious sweat. And still, they can crank out a smile. These guys have sure earned my respect. Now I see why they do this barefoot. And the boots I've borrowed are a little bit too big. I definitely wasn't prepared to be this hot and this dirty. It's a lot harder than it looks. I'm stuck! <laughs> I feel so 
helpless. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh. <sighs> Definitely worked up a sweat there. <laughs> I much prefer being on the road. Back to it. My journey through Central Philippines has shown me the story behind some of the country's favorite foods. From meat to rice. And as I continue my journey up north, I wonder what other food I'm going to be introduced to.